Hey everybody, this is Swift. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Major League Hacking. Uh, I'm here today to give you a quick tutorial on how to use Ruby on Rails. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, Ruby on Rails is a framework using the Ruby language. Um, the framework is, is for typically web applications. Um, it's a very opinionated framework in the sense that uh, it has a very strict layout that if you were to dive into any Ruby on Rails application, you would be able to immediately know where the different parts of the application are and be able to quickly navigate your way around and understand how the actual application works. A couple things to know about Ruby on Rails. Um, typically the kinds of, of apps that you would use Ruby on Rails for are CRUD apps. So that's where you have resources that you are creating, um, showing, updating, and deleting. Um, also another paradigm that's pretty familiar for Ruby on Rails is MVC, Model View Controller. Um, basically what that means is that the um, things that handle interacting with data, the things that handle interacting with the logic of the application, the things that handle interacting with your views are all very separated. And I'll be able to show you that pretty, pretty quickly here, but um, let's dive right into it. So um, today I'm going to show you how to make a really simple Rails app, um, basically to help you get started if you were going to make a, a pretty simple CRUD app. Um, the idea I'm, I'm working with here is I'm going to show you how to make um, a list of hackathon ideas. So in order to get started, you need to make sure you have Rails installed in your system um, and you have Ruby. Um, you can figure out if you have Ruby by typing the word Ruby and doing dash V. Um, it'll tell you what version of Ruby you're using. Um, in this case, I'm using Ruby 2.2.3, which is the latest edition. Um, if you have any issues installing Ruby, I would go directly to the Ruby website. Um, there's this handy package manager for different versions of Ruby called RVM, Ruby Version Manager, which you can definitely check out as well. Uh, the first thing to do is to install Rails, so gem install Rails. Um, this will install the latest version of Rails in your system. Um, right now, um, I have it installed already, and the version of Rails is 4.2.4. So to start a new application, all you have to do is type Rails, new, and the application name. Um, in this case, I'm going to do uh, LHD for local hack day. Um, I'm also going to tell it to skip uh, skip, skip uh, Spring, which is a framework to quick load applications. We don't really need it in this case. Um, if you type Rails new dash dash help, you'll see a number of um, options that you can pass it, including things like what kind of database you want to use, whether you want to include JavaScript, whether you want to include Spring or the Rails assets pipeline, um, test frameworks, things like that. Um, in this case, I'm going to ignore a lot of the um, advanced stuff, but we're just going to go right into it. Um, so the first thing it does is it's going to generate a bunch of files, and we're going to go through exactly what those files are. Um, there's a number of default gems. Gems you can think of like libraries. Uh, Rails has a number of default gems that it uses to actually uh, handle the framework. Um, so it looks like it's done. Let's navigate into the LHD folder, um, and pretty quickly uh, you can see uh, a list of all the files that are here. I'm going to open this up so you can actually see it. Um, these are the, the default files and directories that a Rails application will generate. Um, I'm going to walk through them and quickly and give you a quick overview of what each of them does. Uh, app is where you're going to find all of your application logic. Uh, we're going to dive more into that one in a second. Uh, I'll navigate that for you. Uh, bin is, is for binaries. This is uh, basically pieces of, of code that you're going to run that do things for your application. If you were to look in there right now, that comes with some default ones. Um, Rails, Reek, Setup, and Bundle. These are just things you might run over the course of managing your application. Um, config, this is where all of your application's configuration files go. This is everything from um, where the database lives to uh, maybe your API keys, um, things like that. There's also in, in this like translations if you have a multilingual app um, and environment stuff, so uh, in case you have a different environment between development and production or things, something along, along those lines. It also has a file called routes, which we're going to talk about a little later, but that's how um, when people access URLs, it's mapped to different resources in your application. The next one is, is uh, DB. It's everything involving the database. Um, in there, we're, we're going to touch that one a little bit. It has your schema files, so uh, exactly a, a list of all the tables and columns that are in your database, as well as migrations, um, which is a concept I'll cover in a little bit. Lib. Uh, I'll talk about lib and vendor together. i skip a little ahead of vendor. Um, you can think of lib as libraries that you are writing. Uh, typically, that might be something like a piece of logic that is, is self-contained. Um, and vendor is more for libraries that third parties have written. Um, so if you're using some kind of Ruby library that in your application, that, that is not a gem. Um, 
logs. That's basically all, all of your, your logs files from, from your application. Public is a place where you can serve static assets um, like HTML, JavaScript, uh, CSS, things like that. Typically, you don't really want to use that too much. Um, test, this is where if you're going to write tests, all of your test files go. Uh, vendor, uh, we already talked about vendor. Then there's a couple of files down here. One of them is called gem file, which I'm going to open up for you now. A gem file is basically a file that dictates all of the dependencies that your app has. Uh, this is the default setup for Rails right now. So you can see that we're in order to run this application, we have a couple of things that we require. Rails, obviously the framework we needed to run this application. Um, SQLite 3, uh, which is a database that we use. Uh, SAS Rails, this is, Rails has this idea of an asset pipeline. Basically you can put things like images, JavaScript, CSS in an assets folder and it, uh, use things like CoffeeScript or SAS, and Rails will take care of actually compiling all of the um, SAS or, or CoffeeScript files into actual JavaScript and CSS. Um, Uglifier, which, which is used for compressing JavaScript, um, Copy Rails, by default, uh, Rails uses CoffeeScript as the, uh, the language you, to write JavaScript uh, in. Uh, jQuery, uh, TurboLinks, those are both, uh, well, TurboLinks is a library to, to make navigating around your Rails app faster uh, when you're clicking through, and jQuery is a library for manipulating the DOM and, and doing some fun stuff with JavaScript. Um, okay, so we've looked at all that. Uh, the other things that are in here are rake file, which is typically where you would put standard tasks that you run. So uh, maybe you have a task to import data or download data from production, um, and then config.ru is just a basic uh, file to, that any server will look for when they're actually starting this application. So we've talked about all of these high-level folders. Let's dive into app because this is where we're going to be spending most of our time. Uh, if you look in app, you, you'll see a number of, of folders. Assets, controllers, helpers, mailers, models, and views. Um, every Rails application is broken down into these standard components. Um, you can also add your own, uh, but I'm not going to cover that during this tutorial. Assets, as I mentioned before, is, is your asset files, JavaScript, CSS, um, images, things of that nature. And again, Rails has this idea of an asset pipeline that will handle all the compilation of that for you. Controllers. Controllers is basically the way that you uh, tell, tell your application how to interact with views and, and models. Um, views are, are actual um, representations of data, so typically that looks something like HTML or JSON, uh, whatever you're returning back to the end user. Uh, models are, are the layer that you use to talk to your database. So literally that could be something, in, in the case of this, this uh, app that we're going to build here, we're going to create a model that uh, that represents each idea that we're, we're putting into our application. Um, helpers, those are little pieces of code that are logical helpers to, to make your life easier. So if you find yourself doing a, a single piece of code over and over again, you can wrap it up in a helper to make it easier. Mailers have anything to do with sending email. Uh, and views, as we talked about, models and views we talked about earlier, models with data later, views is how things are displayed. So with that, let's actually dive into creating uh, our application. So Rails has all of these handy features to make it easy to generate the files that you need automatically. So in order to do that, we type the words bundle exec, which means to use the, the libraries that are installed in this application, uh, Rails, G, which stands for generate, and we're going to generate a new controller first. Um, so if we generate a controller uh, for uh, ideas. So we'll run that command. It's going to show us immediately that we have some files that are generated. The important ones to note here are the ideas controller, um, a folder for, for views for ideas, uh, and then the rest of this is some assets and helpers and um, test files. We're not actually going to use those during this. So if we, let's open up the controller and see what, what a, a default controller actually looks like. Uh, app controllers, and you can see that it's the ideas controller. It's just an empty file, it's, it's a class. Every controller is actually just a class with a bunch of methods, um, which is great. Super simple to understand. And if we open up the view control, the view file that uh, was generated as well, we'll see that that's actually just an empty folder, which is cool. Um, one thing we should probably do is actually start the server. So again, we can run the command bundle exec um, rails. And this time, if we type s for serve, um, it'll actually start up a Rails server on our machine, which is now running at port 3000. So if we open that up in our browser, we'll actually see the default Rails screen. Uh, that says welcome to Rails. So our server is successfully running. So now that we have our controller, um, let's actually make it do something. Uh, I mentioned before that in config, there's a file called routes. 
So config routes.rb. If you look at this file, it actually tells the application where your, what URLs map to what actual resources. Um, we just generated an, an ideas controller, so let's tell Rails that we have a new resource called ideas. So we can literally type the word resources, since it's multiple ideas. Um, you can also have singular resources, like a profile, but in this case we're going to have multiple, and we're going to tell it ideas. Uh, Rails has a lot of conventions around things like uh, symbols, which if you are a Ruby programmer you'll be familiar with, but it does a lot of the mapping and configuration for, for you uh, for these kinds of things. So now that we've done that, we should be able to um, take a look at some of the routes that Rails is going to generate for us by default. So once again, we'll type bundle exec, and this time we're going to type rake, uh, and we're going to do routes. This is going to uh, basically list out all of the routes that are available in our application. You can take a look here and see a list of the default routes that Rails generated for an ideas resource. Um, it created an index action, create action, some stuff around editing, some stuff for showing it, and some stuff for destroying it. If you look, all of these different uh, um, URLs, slash ideas, slash ideas, slash new, slash ideas, slash uh, the ID of an idea, slash edit, they all map to different uh, methods within a controller, which I'll show you in a second. Um, each of these is also mapped to different verbs, so get, post, put, or delete, um, which are just HTTP verbs as well. So let's see what happens if we go to slash ideas in our application, since we now have that route. Uh-oh, unknown action. It's because the index action couldn't find, it couldn't be found in the actual controller. So let's start by creating that actual method. So we go back to our controller, which we have over here. Um, literally, the, the way to fix this is by defining a new method called index uh, and literally putting it right here in the controller. For now, we're not going to put any logic in here, but we'll do that in a second. If we refresh the page again, you'll see that we have a new error and that the template is missing. It's because we don't have a view yet for this action. So the easiest way to fix that is to actually create one. Um, it, the views that you in your, your folder for each controller are actually named after the methods that you create. So in this case, we're going to create a new file at app views ideas index. Uh, we're going to name it index.html.erb. Uh, the way you can think about that is erb uh, is a, way, a templating language that you can embed Ruby within HTML. You could also do this with Haml or another language as well, but um, the default out of the box is erb. So simple enough, let's just write some HTML. We'll, we'll do something like hello world, and we'll save it. If we go back to our application, refresh the page, suddenly we see hello world. Congratulations, we've just created our first uh, Ruby method on a controller. But this isn't really that exciting. What we want to happen is we want to be able to display a list of ideas to a user and let them manage that list. So let's start with, with, uh, with some simple uh, HTML that we can work with. In our, our heading, we'll call it ideas. We'll generate a new list, uh, and we'll put some sample ideas in here. So for each list element, we'll put an idea. We'll do three of these out of the box to take a look at. So we have idea number one, idea number two, and finally, idea number three. And we'll close off our list here. Now if we refresh the page, we see that we have a list of ideas. But again, it's still static, not very dynamic. So one of the nice things about controllers is that th they are the map between your database and your actual views. So if we want to collect information from a database or from the, our application in some way, we can actually create variables and different things that we can pass to our views to use. So as an example, if we go back to the ideas controller uh, and we go to the index action and we literally create a variable called at ideas, uh, in, in Rails the convention uh, for variable naming is if it's something that is a local variable, uh, in this specific in, uh, method, and you'll name it with a, a pre you'll prefix it with an at symbol. So the variable called ideas uh, will literally create an array, put in idea four and idea five. So how do we display this in our actual view? Well, simple enough. Um, if, if we actually, before we start editing the list, let's see what happens if we actually just dump it out. So as I mentioned before, ERB is a templating language that allows us to embed Ruby in our HTML. Uh, the convention for ERB is literally to uh, do a, a less than sign, a percentage sign, uh, the code in, comes after that, and then to close it off, you do a percentage sign and a greater than sign. Um, in order to print something out, you prefix it with an equal sign. 
So this literally means print out whatever the result of the Ruby statement inside this tag is. Uh, in this case, we'll just print out whatever the value of ideas is. If we refresh the page, we can see we now have an array that's printed out with idea number four and idea number five in it. Um, that's pretty cool, but we want to actually have the list be populated by those ideas. So in order to do that, we can use some other fancy Ruby methods. Um, specifically, in Ruby, you can use loops. You can use all kinds of constructs. And in this case, it makes the most sense to use a loop. So we can do something like ideas.each, so for each idea. Um, and then we'll actually do something with that. Um, the same way that you would if you were just writing standard Ruby, you do need to use end tags to close things off. So in this case, for in, in each list element, or for each item in our ideas uh, variable, we're actually just going to print out the idea. So if we do that and we refresh our page over here, it appears that we forgot to do something here. What did we do? Uh, let me check the end of the book. What did we do here? Oh, sorry, we forgot the do. So obviously you need to follow standard Ruby syntax. Now we have ideas number four and five printed out in our list. If we look at this HTML, we can see that it's actually just a list. Cool. But this is still coming from a controller. It's still static inside the actual controller itself. How do we actually get this to pull from a database? Well, simple enough. Now we need to actually create a model. So in order to do that, we can again use one of the handy Rails generators. So we once again type bundle exec Rails G, G stands for generate, generate a model. Um, and this one, we're going to generate an idea model. Cool. So you can see some files that got generated. We have this thing called uh, in DB migrate that has a bunch of numbers, and then it says create ideas. We have a, an actual model file in app models idea. And then we have some test files that we're going to ignore. So let's talk about migrations. Migrations are ways of, talking, of making changes to your database. So you can think of, of all of the files inside the DB migrate folder as a list of the things that you needed to do from a blank database to get you to your current status. So each migration file does something to affect the actual um, database itself. Let's open that file up and see what it actually looks like. So it's in DB migrate. You'll notice it's prefixed by a number. Um, that's actually a date time stamp. So you'll see it's 2015, 09, 23, and then a bunch of numbers around the time. Uh, today is September 23rd, so 2015, 09, 23. So basically, if you look at this migration, um, it's a class, once again, which is a pretty common paradigm you'll see in Rails. Um, there's a method called change, which gets executed whenever you run a migration. Um, there's a, a method that's being called called create tables, and it's being passed the word ideas, or the symbol ideas. Um, and it also has uh, some methods that we're calling on the, uh, a block. One of that is timestamps, which very simply creates two columns, created at and updated at in a table. Um, so this is basically the, the command we would run to actually make that change. So, um, and I'll also show you in DB there is a file called, um, sorry, we haven't actually run a migration yet. But So let's actually run th that migration. So again, once again, we'll do bundle exec. Um, this time we're going to type rake DB migrate. Uh, and when we do that, is actually going to create the table. So now we have an ideas table. The problem is that there's not actually any columns in there except for timestamps. So we need to do something to actually get the text of the idea that we want. So um, in order to do that, we're actually going to make an adjustment to our migration. Simple way to do that, you literally take the actual table, um, and there's an, a bunch of methods on that table that allow you to add different types of columns. In this case, we're going to add a string column. We're going to call it name um, for the name of the idea. Since we've already run the migration, uh, this, which wasn't correct, we actually need to roll it back to do that and go back to the database that we had before. We can just do db migrate down and give it a version. The version is uh, very simply the timestamp uh, prefixing the actual migration. Cool. It's back, and then we can literally just run the same command. But this time, you'll notice when we run it, we actually have uh, a name column in our table. So. Um, let's take a look at the actual model file that's been generated. That's in app models ideas. Uh, uh, sorry, app model idea.rb. It's pretty simple. Once again, it's a class. It inherits from this thing called Active Record Base. Uh, Active Record is a, a library that makes it really easy to map 
classes to uh, database tables. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to be using some, some standard methods on that, but you can think of it as, as uh, a, a way of managing different uh, data in your actual database. So we have our class, we have our migration, we ran our migration. Uh, we know that there's an attribute called name, which obviously is not uh, reflected in the class, but it doesn't actually need to be. Um, so how do we actually use that? Well, let's go back to our controller. This is where uh, controllers are responsible for, for handling the relationship between the data and your actual views. So pretty simply, all we're going to do is use that class idea, which if you, once again, if you look at the model, is where that's being defined. Uh, and we're actually going to just call idea.all. So literally what that mean, does is it's an active record method that will pull all of the ideas in the database. Um, then we actually need to do something with it in the view. So if we go to our view index here, um, we, we're printing it out uh, and showing it. So good to go. Let's, let's see what happens when we run this. No ideas. Why? It's because we don't actually have any ideas in the database. So let's create some. Um, to do that manually in the database, we can run, once again, bundle exec rails, and this time C. C stands for console. This will open up a Rails console for our actual application. So we can do something like idea.create. Create is one of those active record methods that we have. And we'll give this idea a name, and we're going to call it my first idea. You can see the log of what actually happened. We began a transaction. We inserted uh, into the ideas table something with a name created at an update value. You can see the name we created at and the update in the log. So now if we go back to our application, we refresh the page, we can see that we have an idea. Obviously, it's not printing out the name yet, but we'll talk about that in a second. We can also, cr let's create a second idea just so we have one to play with. Uh, and we can also obviously d delete ideas. So if we refresh here, we can see there's now two ideas. Uh, we could actually do something like idea.last.destroy, um, which will get rid of one as well. So you can manipulate these pretty freely. So let's fix that issue where we're actually not seeing the, the name of the idea. Why is that? Well, if you go back to our actual view that we were working with, you'll notice that we're actually just printing out uh, the idea, the cl actual class name. Um, so the way to fix that is literally to just uh, call the, a method that pulls the, the name from the actual table. Um, luckily, Active Record handles this for us. We can literally just use the word name since the name of the actual column that we created in the migration is name as well. So now, if we refresh the page, instead of getting the class name, we actually get the name from the database. Cool. So now we have a dynamic application that is pulling ideas from a database. Uh, that said, we don't want to be able to have to create our ideas through a console every time. Uh, let's create a way for people to actually create ideas using HTML. So once again, we can start using the same. You'll notice that in Rails, you use a lot of the same patterns over and over again. So the same way that we generated um, a, a couple of a method and a file to, to handle actually making uh, the index action, we can do the same thing for a new action. So create a new method. We're going to call it new. And we're literally going to define a variable called idea and do idea.new. So we have a brand new idea. Um, if we go to ideas slash new, which again, once again, if we were to run um, bundle exec rake routes, bundle exec rake routes, um, we'll see is one of those predefined methods that um, Rails makes for us. So if we were to go to ideas slash new, you'll notice we don't actually have a template, so we need to create one, um, which we can do very quickly by creating something in app views ideas new.html.erb once again. Um, we'll save this file as a blank file for now just to make sure everything is working. Great. So now what we actually need is to create a, a form element that we can actually work with to, to collect data from the user. So once again, we can use um, some Ruby to help us with this. So we'll do Ruby. Uh, Rails has a, a, a function called form4, which helps us build forms. Uh, we're going to build a form for this idea. Uh, once again, we just give it a block. Um, again, each um, element inside a form has um, some methods that will help us. So we can do something like label. Uh, we'll do a label for name. Uh, we can create a text field, which makes the most sense for, uh, for actually collecting the name value from the user. And then obviously we need some kind of like way to submit it. So we can just use f.submit, which will generate us a submit button. A um, couple of lines of Ruby. 
we refresh the page, and suddenly we have a form where we can submit something. Very cool. Let's try, some, try putting something in. My third idea. We hit create new. Oh no, something ha went wrong. The problem is we don't have a create method. Uh, if you think about what's happening, new is literally a, a method that will render a form for us. Um, when you click the, the create button on, or the submit button on the form, the data that's in the actual form is posted somewhere. Um, typically in Rails, that's the create method is where it's posted. So we actually need to define that create method to save the, that data to the database. So let's go back to our controller, which is here. Uh, we'll literally create a method called create. Um, and in here, we actually need to do something. Because right now, if we go back and we hit go again, uh, you'll notice we don't have a template. But we also aren't doing anything with that data. Typically, what happens in a create method is you take the data and you actually um, persist it to the database. So simple enough, all we have to do to do that is create a new idea. Um, this time, we actually already have uh, the params that we want, uh, want saved. For now, I'm going to actually call that method idea, or call that value idea params, and we'll come back and fill that in. Um, we'll try saving the actual idea now that we have the values. Um, if it saves, then we probably just want to redirect, um, redirect the user back to the, the index action. So we'll call that um, ideas, uh, sorry, the idea pa ideas path. Um, and if it doesn't work, we'll just render the new action once again and let the user try over. So we have to actually define ideas params. Now, um, in this case, we don't actually want to make this a public method. Uh, on the, the controller, so we can actually use the word private, which uh, in Ruby classes means that these methods are only accessible within the actual um, class that we're, we're using. We'll literally create a method called idea params, and inside there, we're going to use a little bit of Rails magic to pull the parameters from the form. So uh, Rails will automatically wrap the parameters for a form in the, in the actual name of the um, class that you're building. And we're going to look for some attributes. Specifically, we're going to look for name. So if we go back and we try this again, we hit my third idea. Uh, what did we do wrong here? Oh, sorry. I know exactly what I did. Um, params is the actual value that that is getting passed back. We're actually requiring that the idea be permitted and then uh, th that idea uh, be defined and then permitting that to include the value and name. So if we try that again, and we can now see we have my third idea. It's kind of annoying that we have to type, keep typing in the word new to get to the new URL. Let's create a link that actually gets us there. So if we go back to our index view, we can once again use some Rails, a Rails uh, method to do that. We'll, we'll create a link to, we'll call it new and we'll do it, link it to the new ideas path. If you look back at uh, the rake routes, um, the rake routes command that we ran before, you'll notice that there are these prefixes on the side. Um, you'll notice new idea uh, and ideas are, are familiar. We've used them. Uh, Rails has these things called path helpers that these will prefix to. So new ideas path is what, what that uh, maps to. So if we refresh the page again, um, what do we do this time? Oh, new idea path. Sorry, it should be singular. New idea path. We refresh. We click on new. Uh, we now are taken to our form, and we can continue to add uh, ideas to our list. Very cool. Now, what happens if we want to actually see one of these ideas individually? Well, this, the easiest way to do that would actually do, to be just to create it again, a linked link directed at that actual. Um, idea. So we'll put the name as the actual text of the link, and then uh, let's actually just send the user to um, to that a URL that maps to that actual idea. So right now, if we refresh the page, uh, oh sorry, obviously this is intended to be idea. If we refresh the page, we click on our idea. You'll notice that. We're in unknown action. We haven't defined show yet, but you'll notice that the URL has ideas slash one. Uh, in our database, that the idea we just clicked on is mapped to the ID of one. So if we go back and we look at it, it's my first idea. Uh, if we were to open back up our, our uh, Rails console, 
and we were literally to run idea.find, and we gave it the ID of one, you'll see that it pulls that ID, the, my first idea from the database. Uh, likewise, if we put in an ID of three, we'll notice that it pulls up the one called my third idea. <coughs> so, how do we actually display something on the page? Well, once again, we go back to our controller, uh, and we're actually going to create a method. This time, we're going to call it show. So we'll call this show, um, and we'll call create a variable called idea, and we'll literally do exactly what we just did in the console, idea.find. <coughs> this time, we're actually going to directly access the params value. We're going to call it pull ID from the params, uh, and now we have our ID, our, our idea. Um, we can actually display that. We'll create a new file called in app views ideas called show.html.erb, and in there, we'll create a heading tag. We'll actually print out the idea's name, uh, and let's see how it works. So if we click, we see my first idea, and we're, now we're mapped to ideas one. If we go to ideas slash three, we see my third idea. If we go to ideas slash four, we see my fourth idea. If we put in ideas slash whatever, make up a number, we're going to get an active record not found, which is essentially a 404, because that does not exist yet. So let's create some, let's actually make it so that you can edit or delete these ideas now, too, because you might want to do that as well. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do, once again, is go back to our controller. You'll notice a pattern here. And we're going to create an edit action so that we can actually edit the, the value. Um, we can also go up here and create, uh, to make this easy for the user, we'll actually just insert a link so that they can go directly there. So once again, link two, we'll call this one edit. And this is going to go to the edit idea path for this idea. You'll notice that a lot of these, uh, I want, I'm sure you're going to wonder where a lot of these like methods are coming from. Um, Rails has a lot of magic built into it where it's going to automatically generate these methods for you, like the edit idea path, the new idea path. Um, you'll get familiar with them over time, and if you ever are curious about um, the specific naming conventions around something, the Rails guide is excellent at helping you figure those things out. Um, sorry, we, it's at idea. So if we click edit, you'll notice we don't have a template defined yet, but we're going to do that in a second. So lucky for us, the edit uh, view should look a lot like the actual new view, right? All we need is a form. So app views ideas edit html.erb we can actually copy exactly what we had um, from the new view there's ways that you can reduce the, the um, using the same code by using shared partials or something like that but we're not going to do that for now since it's a little bit more advanced so if we refresh the page uh, we'll notice we never defined idea uh, in our actual controller we need to do that the simplest way to do that is to do exactly what we didn't show we'll just paste that value directly in here about that. Pull this in directly into edit. Cool. So if we refresh the page, we'll notice we have the same form, except it's now populated with the value um, that was in, um, it was that of the actual uh, text of the idea. So if we were to click on, go to ideas, click on the fourth idea or the third idea and click edit, and we'll see the same thing. It's dynamic. Cool. So now we actually have to make it so you can update something. Again, once again, uh, the convention is edit is the, the place where the form lives to actually edit something. Update is where you actually send the data, um, this time using a, a, put, uh, a put method. So we can literally use a lot of the same things we did from create as a pattern. Um, this time, though, instead of wanting to um, save the idea, we want to make sure that we, um, we're actually just updating its uh, attributes. Um, we actually want to, we don't want to create a new idea. We want to find the one that we have, and then we want it to uh, update attributes for that idea using the idea params method that we defined below. Um, if it fails, we want to render edit not new, and if it succeeds, we'll redirect it right to the, the index path, and we'll be able to see the change live. So go back to edit. Let's change this to be third the word spelled out. Hit update. Um, what did we do here? Ah, attributes. Uh, pluralization in Rails is clearly pretty important, so make sure that you pay attention, very close attention to that. Cool, now it says my third idea, and if we want to do the same thing for fourth, maybe this is now our fifth idea. We update it, we see it. Cool, so now we have an application where we can create new ideas, um, we can edit the ones that we have now. What happens if you want to delete an idea? 
So very similar to the edit action, let's create one for, for deleting things. Um, we'll open back up the show view, and we're going to create a new link. This time, we're actually going to link this one to destroy. Um, and so for destroy, if you, go, if you go back to our routes, you'll notice that there's no prefix, so we can literally just use idea path. Um, and we'll literally just pass it the idea. The thing with destroy is that uh, it's it very dependent on method. So if you look, um, the path for deleting an idea, um, updating an idea, and getting an individual idea are all basically are, are the same URL. The thing that's different is actually the method that you're using. So in this case, we actually want to use a delete method, which is just an HTTP method. And you can do that really simply with Rails by literally putting method delete as a parameter of your link. So we refresh the page. Um, we click destroy. You'll notice that there's no action. Same pattern as before. Go back to our controller. Create a destroy method. Um, in this case, we need to actually fill it in. So the first step, once again, is to actually pull the uh, idea with the associated ID that we're passing through. Um, with that idea, we're actually going to call the destroy method on it. Uh, and then we're just going to redirect back to the ideas path, which is the index. Uh, let's just go back and hit destroy again. Notice my fifth idea is gone. Cool. So we now have an application that lets us create ideas. Um, we can view them in a list. We can view individual ideas. We can update the ones that, that need updating, and we can delete the ones that don't. Um, so basically what we've looked at is how to generate a, uh, a basic resource in a Rails application from start to finish. And there's a couple other things you, you might want to know. Like As you, your ideas become more complex, generally speaking, you're going to want to create resources for each individual thing. Um, so if, for instance, like your ideas might have comments on them. Um, in order to do that, you would literally just generate a new resource called comments. And then using uh, the, the model, as well as the views in the controller, you can map the comments to the actual ideas that you're talking about. Uh, I'm not going to go through any of that right now. Um, this is actually going to be about, just about the end of the tutorial. Uh, we really wanted to give you an idea of like, how Rails works and how to generate basic scaffolding of an application. Um, you could literally take this and translate it into a number of things. These ideas could actually be blog posts, or it could be messages, or it could be literally any resource that you can think of. Um, luckily for us, you don't have to code this whole thing by hand every time you want to do it. Rails has a lot, uh, has a magic method, or a magic uh, uh, way of generating these automatically, which I'm going to show you right before we wrap up here. It's really good to understand how they all work and how it all fits together before you um, just start generating things, though. Um, so that's why I wanted to show you that firsthand. So in order to actually generate um, a, a scaffold of that, you can literally, once again, run bundle exec um, rails scaffold. Um, and this time, we're going to scaffold something. We'll just create something new. Let's say it's actually comments. Um, and we can actually do something like, say each comment also has a name. Uh, it's a string. We can do something like this. Oops, sorry. Uh, what did I do here? OK, well, we're going to generate a scaffold of a message. You'll see um, literally all it does is um, generate all of the files that we talked about before. So all of the views that, that we made by hand are now automatically generated. Um, if we actually open up the messages controller now that we've scaffolded it, you'll see that all of the methods that we made are actually filled in. And there's a little bit more logic, including doing things like J handling JSON. Um, we can also look at um, our actual uh, views, and those are also a little bit more filled out as well. So if we look at messages, we'll see that um, those are also sh filled out. And then um, it also generated a handy-dandy migration for us, which lives right here uh, within db migrate. Uh, create messages. You'll see literally same idea as before. It created a, a string called name and it has timestamps. So if we actually now run that, uh, once again, we run bundle exec rake db migrate. It'll generate, it'll actually run the migration and create the messages table. And then we can also run bundle exec rake routes to see all the new routes that's been generated. 
and we see we have it for messages. So if we go back to our application, instead of ideas, we go to slash messages. You'll see we have this, once again, the same kind of thing. But instead of having to do all that by hand, uh, it's actually done for us automatically and generated. We can edit it, go back, all kinds of things. You see our whole list. So that's a basic introduction to Rails. If you're interested in learning more, my advice would actually be to go to the Ruby on Rails website and check out the documentation. They have like a really fantastic thing called the Rails Guide, which is literally um, one of the most comprehensive ways to learn about Rails. There's also a ton of tutorials and resources out there for you. Um, Rails is a really amazing framework. It's fantastic for building applications that handle manipulating basic data. Um, it's something you should be very familiar with. A lot of the websites you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis will be built in Rails. There's a lot more to it, though. Um, that was a really quick introduction. I hope you were able to learn something. Uh, once again, I'm Swift. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Major League Hacking, and, and we really appreciate you tuning in. Have a great local hack day, everybody. Thank you.